And finally, Dr. Rupert Huck. Thanks. Yeah, I just wondered, can you guys update us on the old uh, EU visa rules issue with um, British Acts trying to break into the European market? Yeah, I mean, it's still a major problem, um, and it is one of the issues that contributes to the fact that musicians are in a particularly dire strait at the moment. So it's very difficult for musicians to tour in the EU still. Um, the Schengen visa gives you 90 days of work in a 180-day period, and unfortunately we're now seeing a lot of musicians and crew hit the 90 days and have to come back. They either have to shorten their tours or they have to turn down work, um, and that's really causing a lot of practical problems for our members at the moment. So we haven't seen any progress what we would like is an EU-wide cultural touring agreement um, or, you know, I still think pursuing bilateral agreements with individual territories at the moment is probably our best short-term uh, approach. And are you sort of involved with talking to government in resolving it? Is there beer and sandwiches at number 10? I'd love, to, I'd love to be having conversations about this at such a high level, but no. Um, I mean, I've tried to talk actually to some people on the EU side, and at the moment it's really clear that the relationship with the UK government has completely broken down. I mean, that's the impression that we get. And unfortunately, our members are um, some of the casualties of that. Um, obviously, there's the Northern Ireland Protocol, and there's kind of bigger issues, um, bigger fish to fry than um, the musicians. But it is an issue that... Um, there's a lot of awareness around it. I think there's a lot of understanding of the fact that touring is such a significant part of musicians' lives. Um, so we're still hoping there is an opportunity to renegotiate the trade agreement um, in a few years' time, and we need to maximise on that, and we do need to get some changes. Which bit of government is actually leading on it? Is it the international trade? Which, which bit is it, and who should it be? Uh, well, it is international trade. Um, it is uh, also um, the Home Office. It's the sort of... Um, immigration aspect to it. Um, we talk to DCMS officials most regularly. There's also an issue around um, DFT because it's transport. So yeah. the issue of cabotage is an issue for the DFT where basically you can only take a truck, you can only make three stops in the EU before you have to return to the UK. So a lot of companies are now having to go and hire um, EU trucks in order to do their touring, which is not good for um, companies that are based here and it's definitely not good for musicians and organisations that are on low budgets. It's very difficult. So unfortunately it's a cross-departmental issue. So we will talk to anybody who wants to talk to us about it um, and we're trying to open doors and have as many conversations as we can. So possibly some banging heads together and, I don't know, do it in committee approach with everyone. It seems to be siloed off by the sound of it. And it is a bit. So yeah, that would be incredibly helpful. And some of those other things, uh, when I've asked international trade questions in the House on behalf of constituent companies, it, they, they're stymied by the um, leaving the EU Common VAT agreement. If music is sort of dematerialised and you don't have to stamp in goods in, goods out, is, has the Brexit impact of that been less on streaming? I don't know who would know that. No, I don't. Well, know. you know, streaming, <laughs> it, it is basically an international business. Uh, you know, there aren't tariff barriers or anything mm -hmm. like that that get in the way of streaming. But there is a symbiosis between you know, recorded music and live, which is, you know, it's very important to us that we can export as much recorded music as possible. That grows fan bases overseas mm -hmm. that then will go and see an artist live. You have to compete on both fronts. And similarly, artists being able to freely tour is important to promote their recorded music and consumption. So we share an absolute common interest here. I agree with Naomi that you know, these are barriers that we need to see dealt with quickly, but we also need to be much more ambitious in promoting our music overseas and our culture overseas. I think the committee went, if I got this right, to South Korea not that long ago. I was there a couple of weeks ago and talked to the deputy director of the MCST, which is the DCMS in South Korea, and I asked them how much support you know, they give to the Korean music industry, and you'll be aware of K-pop and you know, the phenomenon there. Uh, and it's many, many times the level of support that the UK gives to uh, SMEs in music. You know, they, they mentioned sort of 20 to 25 million pounds a year of support, whereas we're more like half a million pounds a year uh, through the Meg Scheme, a little bit through the Showcase Fund. Now, we're very grateful for all the assistance that we get, and we have a great partnership with DIT, uh, but ultimately we have to be a lot more ambitious than that if we're going to compete for market share, and UK market share globally has been under pressure. And then the sort of conclusion question I wanted to ask you, is the government dragging its heels on all this? Uh, is there more that could be being done for the industry by them? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 I feel some sympathy 
to the government, sort of, because of the, the complexity of, of, of what's been going on over the past few months and to political will and focus. It's been hard with all of the, uh, the changes that have been going on. So, yeah, I mean, as I probably said ad nauseum today, galvanising that political will again to do... I mean, interestingly, George Freeman is, is, is back in position, I think, as the base minister... And, and which is wonderful, and he 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 spoke in the house, I think, in s- s- November. No, when was your when was December, well, December, December, December uh, of last year, um, saying, you know, that the government was committed, three that the government were yeah three minutes ago when he's back, uh, it, it, saying that the that the government was committed to to the free flowing fair remuneration that we all really want to see. Everyone agreed on that. I think it would be unfair to say government's been dragging its heels. I think they've actually ah. driven these working groups, you know, relentlessly uh, and put a lot of pace into the discussions and are holding the industry to account to make progress regularly. I certainly get that message regularly from government. So I think it would be unfair to criticise them. I think politics has meant that there have been some ministerial changes that have perhaps slowed things down. I mean, I, yeah, I would just say that um, absolutely the IPO have been convening regular meetings, which has been great. Um, and, yeah, it's really good to be around the table, but it's just moving the remuneration element up the agenda, really. And, Tom, I was partial to the 78 stone wobble in yeah. my day. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad somebody remembers it. Yeah, no, honestly, it's <laughs> changed my life. Yeah. Um, you advocated a national music strategy. Yes. Is that something that the three of you would go for? I, I, I think it's. I think it's that? the most obvious solution to these questions. You know, the, the people on the opposite side of the argument to me frequently talk about the fact that um, the UK is losing market share. Well, well, who's growing market share? South Korea are growing market share. They have a complete integrated music policy uh, in order to develop their soft power around the world because they recognise the power of music. And um, we tend to forget it. National strategy? I think it's focused on international growth, absolutely. I think it'd be great. To, I mean, we have a national plan for music education. We need a plan that we, you know, there's a lot that we do agree on. Um, it may not always, it's not evident in this particular session, but we do meet regularly at UK Music, and it would be great to have a coordinated plan. And it's something we are truly world beating in. That phrase is mm-hmm. overused a lot, but yeah, with our music, we are. Thank you. Uh